Okay, good afternoon. Can you guys hear me okay? On a video of the solution to exam three has been uploaded to YouTube channel. And also uh, the solution to exam three um, has also been posted on Moodle. So I'm not going to spend um, extra time talking about exam three. So if you want, please uh, watch the video clip there, okay? So hold on a second. Uh, where did it go? Oh, yeah. My first announcement is uh, the solutions to exam three. It's posted on Moodle. Also, a video. We can't see your screen. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, thanks. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing the screen now? Yeah. So you can take a look. So I'm not going to spend time talking about this exam three. And also, once again, just a, a reminder and teaching evaluation, okay? And you can do that on Moodle. The window, it opens from April 10th to 25th. Uh, what we want to do today is we want to continue on, on the logarithm. Okay. So we're going to talk about more uh, about this uh, log functions. We talk about that uh, before exam three. So a way to understand logarithmic function is a very challenging part of the course. The way to understand that is um, I often, if you see something like, if y is equal to log with a base b of x, what does that mean? That means you take the base raised to that power of y, you get to x. So the logarithm is nothing but the exponent. And keeping this diagram in your mind will help you a lot. Okay, so log and uh, by the way, b is greater than zero, b is not equal to one. So the log and the exponential functions, the inverse functions. So these two equations, they always go together. If one is true, the other one is true. So, <clears throat> We talk about x, so talk about this log function. You go, to, the output will be y because you can, you take a log of x with base b. So this is, this means uh, going this direct, the other direction, you take this b raised to the y's power. So you will send y to x. So, okay, so this is the key for understanding of the log functions. For example, if you see people ask you, what's the log of eight with base two. So we know this two raised to the third power is equal to eight. So this log is just asking you about two raised to what power gives you eight. So the exponent, so you put that equal to three. So two raised to the third power gives eight. So that's a review of what we did. We did a couple of the simple um, properties of the logs. Now the following four other properties are most um, important and very helpful. So we're going to continue on this. I think I wrote it down last time in the end of the lecture. So when you have two numbers m, m both are positive numbers, okay? 
and you can and r is just a number r is a real number and also the base b is greater than zero b is not equal to one so what we have you will have if you take the log of m times n this product this one can be written as log the sum of these two logs so that's one property okay so if you are going to do the log of the ratio of these two numbers and this one can be written as the difference and now if you want to do log you take your n raised to the r's power so that one well this one is the same as uh, you can bring this r up from you have r carp copies of this log okay so and that's the uh, that's some of the property we're going to have and maybe we can add this one b raised to this log because this log is just the power, b raised to that power will give you m. So you always get to m. Okay? So this one you have to make sure you understand how we get those identities and you know how, how to use that freely. Okay, so for example, we can just use this. If people give you uh, what is the log of, for example, base 6 of 10 plus log 10 no log base six of three so you see this is the log the sum of two logs and they share the same base right so according to this equation there they have the same base so that one can be written as the log of base six now you can multiply this to ten times three that gives you log six of 30 okay and if you want to do the log of, of five over six with base two well because that's the ratio this can this one can be written as the difference of a log sorry about that um forgot to mute my phone sorry about that Uh, you do minus log uh, six with base two, right? And the third case is like, if you want to do log of one over 25th with base three, and we notice 25th is just like five raised to the minus two's power. And you see this is the power, you can bring this power minus two up front, you get this one, okay? Um, so that's this case. And also, we can also get this one. We can have an equation, say, log five is equal to one minus log two. So just a test, a trivia quiz for you guys. Why with this, the fourth equation, with this log, I don't write any base on that. Do you still remember that? Does any one of you remember this? Why for this log, there's no base? Hello, anybody? The chat here, there's a window. Uh, Somebody about the class average. I haven't taken a look at the average. I will let you know, maybe, you know, after a while. And because just like we have like a, a few students who just took the test today. But come back to this question here. Why in this case here, we do not write um, the base for this log. Well, remember this is just so-called the common log, okay. So that means the base is equal to 10. So this one just basically means the log base 10 of five is equal to one minus log base 10 of two. And why is that? 
Well, the thing is, if we use the one, the properties, we have log base 10 of five plus log base 10 of two. And you see the sum of these two logs, the base are the same, and you can write that as log base 10 of five times two. And the five times two is equal to 10. So basically you get log base 10 of 10. So 10 raised to what power to get 10? Of course, 10 raised to the first power you get 10. So that's this why uh, log base 10 of 10, you get a one. So you subtract log base 10 of two from both sides, you have a log, you have this equation here, okay? So, so those are the things we we use this um, properties a lot when we're playing with um, the logs. Um, some of you may ask why, okay? So we need to talk about, briefly talk about why this, of, we do have those three identities. You've got to understand this, okay? You have to understand that. So the next thing you guys want to, before I move on, I want to talk about say for example, why? The first thing. Why is log B of N plus log B of N is equal to log base B of N times N? So the way to prove that, I want to show the left-hand side, and this is my left-hand side and that is my right hand side, okay, right hand side. Right hand side. Oh, I just want to show the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So with this, what is log B, base B of M? I have no idea. I'm not going to use a calculator, but I do know that's a real number. X. So let's suppose this one is equal to X, right? And the second term, what we have is log base B of N. This is another number is equal to Y. So suppose those two quantities, they're equal to X and Y respectively. Now from the first one we get, because of this equation, this just tells me if I raise B, to the x power, I should get the argument b, the m. And for the second equation, if I raise b to the y's power, I get, I have n, right, okay. Now from this two equations, what I can do is b times x, b to the x times b to the y. The, if I multiply the left-hand side, that should be equal to the right-hand side, m times n. But we know from the power, the rules of exponential functions, b times uh, b to the x times b to the y, they have the same base. Basically, that's b raised to the x plus y's power equal to m times n. And this e exponential equation, because b raised to this power, you get m to the n. So if people ask you, what is the log of m times n with base b, it will give you x plus y. And you see here, that is your right-hand side. Indeed, the right-hand side is equal to x plus y equal to the left-hand side. So we just proved that. Right? Okay. So there's a reason, because of the properties of the exponential function, we have this. Okay. And once again, and we can prove why this is true. When you have minus, why do we have the ratio? Uh, the way, similar ways to prove this, if you suppose this first quantity equal to X, the second quantity equal to Y. So from the first equation, we know B raised to the X power, we got M. And from the second equation, B to the Y, you have N. Now this time, instead of multiplying them, because I'm going to do the ratio of that, so if I take M over N, so that should be equal to B to the X divided by B to the Y. But we have the rules for the exponential function. When you divide that, you have B to the X minus Y, right? So now from this equation, then tells you if you do the log of M over N with base B, it will give you the exponent X minus Y. Indeed, that's just uh, log b 
bn minus log base of n. So that proved the second one. Now, as for the third one right there, why you have the exponent? Why is log b raised uh, b of m to the r's power equal to r log m of base b? Well, one way you can think of that is, you know, uh, first, uh, simply like the suppose you have log b of m in this case this is equal to x. That tells you b raised to the x power gets you m. <laughs> now let me just raise m to the r's power. That's the same as you raise b to the x raised to the r's power. That tells you b uh, times b raised to the rx equal to m to the r's power. So this will give you the log. If you take m uh, to the r's power with base b, it will give you the exponent r times x and your x is equal to this log. So that tells you why the three identities, they're true. Okay. The three identities are true. <clears throat> now, once we understood that, let's take a look over the sum of the typical problems we're going to do um, by playing with this uh, three key identities, okay? So here's a typical problem. It says I'll write the following expression as one single log logarithm. So what is the expression? It says three lateral log. We're talking about that when you have ln stands for log of x with base e, right? There's a symbol for that. So three lateral log minus two lateral log of y plus one and the minus five of lecture log z, okay? In, when we are doing all this, we know the domain of log should be, the argument should be greater than zero. So we assume x is greater than zero, y cross one is greater than zero, z is, is greater than zero. So what we can do is uh, first use all of the properties we just learned, okay? So for the solution of this, uh, if I continue to write, so three log x stays the same. Now here is the two, right? So when use the property we just learned, you, you, you can move this to back as the power of y, y plus one. So this is the same as y plus one squared. And the third one will be the ledger log of z to the fifth power. And also I forgot, you know, actually the first one, and you can also do the similar things. This is the same as a ledger log of x cubed. Now with this two, I see a difference. So when I see the difference, well, I'm, I'm sorry, when I see the subtraction, so that can be written as the lateral log of the ratio of these two quantities. And the last log stays the same. And again, I see the difference of the two logarithms. So that can be written as the ratio of these two quantities divided by z to the fifth. And this will be the same as the ledger log of x cubed over one plus y plus one squared times z to the fifth. And you see what we end up with, this is called the single logarithm. So you just have like one term and previously you have like three terms, okay? So this is uh, how we're going to move, move, uh, play with the logs, okay? Let's do another example. So suppose uh, B is greater than zero, B is not equal to one. And let capital A, capital B and capital C are defined as follows. 
uh, we have log base B of two is equal to capital A. We have a log base B of six is equal to B. And log base B of five is equal to C, right? Um, that's the given information. Now, what we need to do is first express the log of base B of 0 0.6 in terms of capital A, B, and C. And also the second one is express, say for an example, log base B of 180 in terms of a, B, and C. So that's the problem. It's kind of confusing. But, uh, you just know these three quantities. You don't, you, you don't know what A, B, C is. Based on this information, you are going to calculate the log with this uh, 0 0.6. Okay. So the way to solve this problem is you try to think about the right 0 0.6 as the product or the ratio or the power of these three quantities, two, six, and five. So what I noticed is 0 0.6 is the same as six over 10, right? It's the same as six over two times five. So in order to do this log of 0 0.6 with base B, this is the same as you do log of six over two times five of B. Now, when you have this thing here, you see that's the ratio and the product that tells you you can do the um, properties of the logs. First, you have the division. So that can be written as log base B of six minus log base B of two times five. And uh, the first one stays the same, but the second one is the product. So that can be written as log base B of two plus log base B of five, because those are the things you have, right? It's kind of like if you're only given like the pieces, like when you play the Lego, right? When you play uh, this, you only have like three pieces, maybe like a square, Maybe you have like a circle, maybe you have a triangle. Those are three ABCs. Use these three things. How can you, you know, build up something looks like the log of 0 0.6 with base B? This is what you need. You got to use these three things. You cannot use some other things. So that's why I tried to make the connections of, um, of this new log with log base B of six, two and five. Now here we can, we can replace log of six with base B, because that is given as a B here, capital B. And here the log B of two, which is capital A. And this one is C. So finally, this can be written as B minus A minus C. So that's the meaning for express this in terms of A, B, and C. Now, once you understand this problem, the next one is you just need to think about 180. How can you do the factoring, make that connect to uh, 256? And we notice uh, 180 is equal to 5 times 36, so times 6 squared. So not the log of B of 180 is the same as log B of 5 times 6 squared. And use the properties of log, you see the product. So you have log B of five plus log B of six squared, right? And log B of five, we know that's equal to C. And this guy here, you see the power, you can just write that as log B of six. And you have C plus two B, right? So because log base B of six is equal to B. Again, you 
express their log in terms of B and C. So this uh, is the other type of the problem. The third type of the problem is, uh, it's kind of like the other direction of the first problem. In the first example we did is like, you have like a multiple terms of logs, you try to write that as a single logarithm. Now this third example, third example is you have like one single log, try to express that as multiple terms of logs. So let's take a look of this one. Um, so this one says, um, express the following in so into how am I going to say that express the following into the form such that logarithms of products quotient and powers do not appear. So take a look of the first problem what we have you have a lateral log of x squared over the square root of one plus x squared. This is not the form we want because we do see a quotient and we do see a power here. So you will have used the property of what we learned to do this. First, you see this is the ratio. So that can be, um, let's assume in this case, x is greater than zero, okay. So, you can write this one as the lateral log of x squared because that's the ratio that can be written as log of a square root of one plus x squared. And now you see this is the power. When x is greater than zero, that one can be written as two lateral log of x. And for the second one, we just realized the square root is just one plus x squared raised to the half's power. So we can keep going. So this is a half. So you can write this one as log of one plus x squared. Okay. So that's, that's the end. Warning, okay, never ever, uh, you cannot do this. You can't break this, there's no such a rule. There's no way you can keep breaking that. You have to stop there. Yeah. Um, let's do another one, very simple, uh, very similar like this. Let's do the lateral log, oh no, not the lateral log, log base of 2021, square root of four minus x squared or over x minus one times x plus one um, raised to the three halves power. So in this case, we assume everything makes sense and x should be greater than one. We assume x is greater than one. And because you want to make this one uh, four minus x squared, you, you can take the square root. So, and we can also write x is less than two. Okay, so we assume x is between one and two. Now this one, we see uh, the numerator is just equal to four minus x squared raised to the half's power. They're all divided by x minus one times x plus one raised to the three halves power. And you have the ratio. The first step is you can do uh, log base 2021, four minus x squared raised to a half's power because that's the ratio. So we can do minus log base 2021 of x minus one times x plus one raised to the three halves power. And now the first one here, you have a half as the power. You can bring that half power up front. So you have the first term. 
Now for the second term, and you can break that as because this is the product. Uh, so you have a log base 2021 20, of x cross one raised to the three halves power. And we can keep simplify this. So the first one stays the same. And the second one stays the same. The third one, because there's another power, you can write that as three halves log of 2021 20, of x cross one. So that's how we try to break that as a much simpler, simpler form of logs. All right, any questions? So another very, very useful formula for logs is uh, so-called the change of base. Um, so why do we need this? Okay. So if you look at your calculator, any standard calculator, you only have like a two functions for logs. Either you have LOG, that stands for log of uh, base 10, right? So this is called the common log. Then you can also have uh, the calculator, it has like a lateral log. This one is the lateral log. Uh, stands for base E, right? Or something. But what if people ask you to do how to use your calculator? The logarithm of base 2021 of 2022. How will you do that with your calculator? Have you ever um, thought about this? Okay. Now, if, if you really want to calculate this quantity and, uh, and on your calculator, you could not find the key for this space, it must be, uh, you know, the design for this calculator is not good because it cannot do this, right? It cannot do any log with any other basis except for this um, common log and the natural log. But the reason turns out we don't have to do that. There's something called the change of the base. Uh, so here's the formula, okay? So we do need a change of base. We need can change of base. What does that mean? Okay, that A, B are positive numbers. A is not equal to one. B is not equal to one. So basically you have A and B are two different bases. And you have like another quantity M is greater than zero. So now if you want to do the log of this M with base B, which one of the, this base, this one can be off, can be, this one is equal to, you do log of M with base A with another base divided by the log of another base A of B. So now is you're doing the log in one base, the log in one base, and now you're doing the logs in another base. So that's why it had changed the basis. Right? And so if you really want to do this log of what as what I proposed, um, 2021, the base is 2022. So in this case, um, my calculator has this key, let your log 
or common lock, it doesn't matter. Let's choose the latch or lock. So in this case, what I want to do, I have my old base is 2021. So you can think about B is equal to 2021. My A is equal to that latch base E. My M is 2022. So according to that change of um, base formula, so this one can be written as the log of the new base E with this guy's on the top. So this is M, so 2022 over log of base E of this base. You see here, A of B. So you put 2021. And in short, that's just equal to ledger log of 2022 over ledger log of 2021. So now, well, all you can do is in your calculator, you get these two quantities separate, but then you do the division, you will get this one. That answers this question. That's how we will do, do, uh, will do this. Okay. It's very useful. And if you do not want to use this base E, that's fine. If you take A to be base 10, B equal to the original base, and the argument is 2022, and you can still do this. You can have change of the base, right? So change to base 10. Base 10 here, this quantity um, as the numerator and divided by log base 10 of 2021. And in short, it's just LOG 2022 over LOG 2021. Okay. So that just solves this. So change of base formula is very useful. Now you can do the log with any basis and by using one of these common functions, function keys in your calculator. Okay. Um, some other examples. If people ask you how well, how will you do a log base three of seven? The two ways to do that, if you want to use your calculator, you, you can change to LN. So that's going to be the ledger log of seven. Seven is on top divided by ledger log, log of three. Or it's the same as you change to common um, base 10 of seven. Now you common base of three. Or you can change to any base, whatever you want. You say, if you want to change the base 20, 21, that's fine. And then you change this one here. So seven still on the top and divided by log of 20, 21 of three. They're all they're going to be the same, going to be the same. But, and there's another one is if you have A, B, both are positive numbers and A is not equal to one, B is not equal to one. So you do, you do log a, B, let's switch that. What if I want to change to base B? That's fine, you change to base B, so B goes on the top, and change to base B, the A is the bottom. Then the log base B of B is equal to one, so this one is equal to, so you see a nice kind of like property. Log A of B is equal to one over log B over A. Now here we try to understand why this thing work. Okay, not only we memorize this thing here, now the big question is why? Why is log B of N can be written as log A of N and log A of B? Okay, so we want to prove that. So let's say, Suppose what we have is the uh, x be equal to log a of m. So that's the, that's the numerator. And the y is equal to the denominator, log a of b. So from the first equation, we know that tells me if I take base a raised to the uh, x power, I get m. From the second equation, I know if I raise a to the y's power, I got a B, right? I got a B. Now here's the tricky part here. So look at A to the X power. This one is the same as A raised to the Y's power, then raised to the X over Y. Why? Because this one 
if we do that, this is the same as y times x over y, and the y and the y cancel out. So you you recover x. So if you notice this part, so you, you uh, we can see the magic here. So your a to the y is just simply just b, right? Your a to the y is just b. So replace the parentheses by b to the x over y. All right. And on the other hand, your a to the x, that's equal to m, right? So that's equal to m. So eventually we end up with an equation m just equal to b raised to the x over y's power. So translate that into a log. That means you take the log of the base b of m. You should recover the ratio. You know, this is exponent x over y. But x over y is nothing but your right hand side. So let's just prove this. So your right hand side is equal to left hand side. Okay, so this is the, the change of base. So I think the purpose of a change of base, you can always change to any convenient base you want to use. Okay? In the past, a lot of errors I have seen from my previous students. Very kind of tricky. You have a log b of x y plus y. No, you cannot break that. Only when you have logs, even only if you have a product, you, you can break this. Otherwise, you cannot break this. So this is not. Big mistake, cross, okay, you cannot do that, can't do this. Another one is log b over x, log, uh, log b of x over log b over y. The ratio of two logs, you cannot write that as the difference. There's no such thing, right? This, this one is, don't get confused. We only have the log b of x over y. We don't have this one here. So once again, this is wrong. Okay. And the third one is like, people often do, what about log x? The power is outside. Say you put, you put some r. Oops. What's going on? You put R there. And people try to bring up the power in front. This is wrong too. The correct, this is wrong. The right way to do that is the log of x to the r's power you know here you can bring that power up front but this one log x raised to the r's power it means x log x times log x it cannot you cannot do that okay and also a very common mistake is uh, like this one here log of 3x uh, it's not going to be equal to one third of log x. So there's no way to move this thing around. So that's another common mistake. There are all kind of all kind of mistakes. Uh, just don't get confused with those uh, properties where we have. Okay. Um, any questions? Now next, we want to talk about how to solve uh, logarithmic equations. Okay. And 
And logarithmic equation means an equation involving logarithm. Okay. Uh, oh, a way to do the logarithm, uh, solve logarithmic equations, you convert to the exponential equations, okay? And using the properties of the logs. So let's take a look uh, of kind of like different examples, okay? Software X. So you have a log six of X plus log six of line is equal to log six of 54. I'm going to solve for that. And for solving of the logarithmic equations, uh, one thing you have to be careful is you want to pay attention to the domain. Because uh, for y equal to log of bx here, if you want to take a log of anything here, your x has to be greater than zero. So in this case, your x has to be greater than zero. So how am I going to solve for this? Well, you see this left-hand side is the sum of two logs. That will definitely remind me of the properties of the logs we just talked about. So the left-hand side, log x, log six of x plus log six of line, that can be written as log six, you know, nine times x. That should be equal to the right-hand side, log six of 54. So one of the things we learned is if you have like log b of x is equal to log b of y, this one is true if and only if, you know, when you have two bases are the same, two bases are the same, and you have to have like a two argument must be the same. So when you see log six of nine X that your left hand side is equal to your right hand side, uh, that tells you your nine X must match with 54. Then that tells you X is equal to 54 over nine give you six. And indeed, you know, you always want to check the domain. This guy is greater than zero and it is, this uh, makes sense. So that's indeed X is a, um, a solution of that equation. Okay. The second one is we want to solve for X, solve this equation, log eight of 48 minus log eight of X, that's equal to log eight of four. And when we try to solve that, we notice this one your x must be greater than zero because that's the domain. Second step, you see the difference. So you do have one of the properties of the logs you can use. This one can be written as 48 over x, right? That's, it's going to be equal to your right-hand side. Now you see they have the same basis. So that tells you 48 over x must be equal to four. And we can solve for X just equal to a 12. And the 12 indeed is greater than zero. So that's a solution. Now the third type of the equation is so let's try to solve log base seven of X equal to two thirds log base seven of eight. Right. Uh, once again, your x has to be greater than zero. And another thing is we see the right hand side. And this two thirds is a constant that can be written as log base seven of eight raised to the two thirds power. And eight raised to the, the two thirds power is like you first, you take the cubic root, that's two, then you square that, that's equal to four, okay? So what you end up with is just actually the left-hand side is log seven over X is equal to log seven over four. And the only possibility uh, that tells you X should be equal to four and X is indeed greater than zero. So you do have a solution, okay? So here, 
just realize this one is equal to 8 raised to the third power, then square, that's equal to 2 squared, that's equal to 4. Okay. Now the last part, let's just finish this, we're going to do more uh, exponential equations next time. So 4 log base uh, 8 of x equal to log 8 of 81. So we just realized the left-hand side, once again, your x has to be greater than zero. The left-hand side is just a four move up. There is x to the fourth equal to log eight of 81. That tells you x to the fourth is equal to eight, uh, 81. So uh, we just need to solve for this equation. So x to the fourth minus 81 equal to zero. And you can factor that as x squared minus nine times x squared plus nine and equal to zero. That tells you x minus three times x plus three times x plus x squared plus nine equal to zero. So you have x equal to three or negative three because x squared plus nine never going to be equal to zero. However, you're going to discard that since x is less than zero. So the only solution what you have is x equal to three. So I think that's all for today. So I probably I'm going to open up some new assignments for um, from from at um, infinity on the law functions. Okay. All right. Any questions? All right. With that, thank you so much. Have a good one.